So hey guys, how are you all, welcome to, so we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto was joined forces with pirates and myths. Naruto x Boa Hancock movie but before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video, now let's begin the story. It has been millennium since the end of the fourth shinobi world war, the war to end all wars, peace reigned through the elemental nations, that is not to say that the way of the shinobi was forgotten, quite the contrary, as a people the elemental nations are heavy on the traditions and customs of old, that is not to say that they would go out of their way to impede the advancement of society, they just went about doing so in ways that incorporated their history. It is because of those who failed to heed history that they are doomed to repeat it, there has been enough killing in the name of peace, the five great hidden villages now act more as a peacekeeping effort than anything else, the smaller hidden villages having been incorporated into the great five, samurai and ninja, working together to protect peace, then you have the tournaments held for each rank. Twice yearly, they are used in an effort to show skills and enjoy combat of old. Scenarios designed and organized by the Gokage, implemented by their chosen representative, the tournaments are moved between the great five villages to bring forward additional income, the tournaments are spaced every two months, first the Genin tournament, then the Chunin tournament and then finally the Jonin tournament, each one held in a different village so that only one village will play host to two tournaments in one year. Ever two years the Gokage would get together and discuss the state of affairs. It used to be every year, but that changed during the reign of the Allied Generation. The Allied Generation was the name given to the generation that finally achieved peace, it was decided that there was never really much to discuss, so, instead, the meeting would be held biennial, the change would give them the opportunity to make more of their gathering, there was always the ability to call a summit if anything worthy arose, not to mention that there was always the chance to catch up during the tournaments held. A couple hundred years had passed since the Fourth Shinobi World War. It was during the summer that the new daimyo of the Land of Fire commissioned the construction of a building in the center of his land, it was to be used as a neutral location for any and all wishing to conduct meetings of any nature, once completed, the new daimyo called a meeting, an unprecedented meeting held between the leaders of all the nations, including the Land of Iron, and the Gokage, leaders of the military might of the elemental nations. This meeting was used to discuss the history of the elemental nations and to help usher in a new era that would always maintain the peace, so as to not repeat the actions of the past a neutral party would be needed that would oversee and mediate any and all problems and such, at first it was believed that some of the elders of the animal clans would make for a great neutral party, their longevity allowing to have viewed the past and still be here long into the future. But then, a person long thought to have disappeared, moved on to the afterlife, dropped into the room, unannounced, landing in a heap in the middle of the surrounding dignitaries. This person was none other than Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Grandfather, shouted the shocked middle-aged Hokage after finally seeing his face. Though the clothing apparel seemed consistent with what most remembered about him, having seen photos of his great, great-grandfather, he was sure that the man before them had to be him, but that didn't make sense, he was said to have disappeared after the death of his great, great-grandmother, Hinata Hayuga, everyone assumed that he had just passed on, how could he be here and still look so young after two centuries? Grandfather, asked everyone else having heard the shout from the Hokage. Ma, you crazy old toad, I said outside the building not smack dab in the middle of the meeting shouted Naruto to the ceiling of the roof, all looking up to see a small smiling purple toad. Well you always like to make an entrance just like Jiraiya boy used to do, remarked Lady Shima. Well yeah, but now was the time to be subtle, how was anything that just happened subtle? Asked Naruto, these people probably have no idea who I am, he exclaimed. Didn't you hear what they said Naruto boy, one called you grandfather, pay more attention Naruto boy, that way you won't waste your breath responded Shima, hoping off the roof and landing on Naruto's shoulder. Really? asked Naruto as he looked around the room until his eyes came to land on the red-headed Hokage, he looked much like Naruto, except with long shaggy red hair and pale blue eyes with a narrower face. Impossible was the collective gasp of the Gokage, there were not many people who looked like the hero of the fourth shinobi world war, the last one to have passed on not long ago was the son of the man standing before them, Boruto Uzumaki. Grandfather? asked the turbulent Hokage looking at something of a ghost before him? Well I am glad to see the traits of the Uzumaki are making their way back, you look similar to my mother, your great, great, great grandmother, she would love to be here to see the rebirth of our clan, spoke Naruto reminiscing on the past. It really is you isn't? We thought you passed on, how are you still alive? asked the Hokage, why didn't you ever come back, you are hailed as a hero and rightfully so, there are many who would give anything to hear and learn from you, where have you been? he shouted, anger anxiety and depression the emotions at the forefront of his question. I am a relic of old, my son, he spoke with mixed feeling of regret. Guilt and sadness, my time has come and gone, I should have no hand in anything regarding the future of the elemental nations. 
I only wish to help and be a voice of reason and watch as that which I fought so hard for continues blossom in this great nation, I had secluded myself where only the animal clans were able to contact me, I am only here today to observe history in the making, never has the elemental nations had a gathering of such important and powerful people, I have made my contribution to history, I am here to watch you make yours, spoke Naruto sagely. Well said, Naruto-sama spoke the leader of the Land of Iron, having heard stories passed down in the Land of Iron about the enigmatic, if I may ask a question, how are you still among the living, you would have to be over 200 years old, he asked. 227 years old to be exact, due to my Uzumaki heritage as well as being the Jinchuriki of the Nine Biju, it had an effect on my cells, now you are probably wondering why has this not happened before to someone else, well, never before has there been a Jinchuriki for the All Nine Biju. I think it's best that I allow them to inform you of the situation spoke Naruto, going through hand seals. All those watched on in interest until his words rang in the ears of the Gokage, they moved to stop him from finishing his hand seals, however, they never got the chance, in a puff of smoke, Naruto was surrounded by small versions of the biju sealed inside him. Shocked, was the sole emotion flooding the room until they heard a feminine squeal coming from the daimyo of the Land of Spring, formerly Land of Snow, the great, great-granddaughter of Koyuki Kazahana, cute, Chibi Biju, screamed the daimyo, as she hurtled the table in front of her and immediately glomped Matabi the Bakaneko, she then moved on until all the biju were in her arms as she squeezed the life from them. Naruto couldn't hold it in any longer and laughed so hard he had trouble breathing as it hurt, it seemed to be a common thing as the laughter that rang out following Naruto was booming, the attempts made by the biju to escape were perhaps the funniest moment of his life, coming around Naruto cleared his throat to gain the attention of the otherwise distracted daimyo who after some coaxing eventually let go of the biju and returned to her seat, pouting and embarrassed. Now, I said I would let the biju explain as they have a better understanding than I spoke Naruto handing the floor over to the biju. It is actually quite simple Naruto, spoke Kurama as she addressed the dignitaries. I know you fool, spoke Naruto reprimanding Kurama, I was puffing up your ego and making you off as more intelligent, he mumbled. Oh, well consider my ego puffed, spoke Kurama as she continued on with his explanation, you see, she spoke readdressing the dignitaries, Naruto is the embodiment of our father's son, Asura Otsutsuki, he not only is the reincarnation of Asura's chakra, he is for all intent and purpose Asura, down to the cellular level, this means that his body is beyond that of a normal, or even advanced Uzumaki. Firstly, Naruto has never had to deal with the corrosive effect of the Jubi's will on his mind, secondly, Naruto has never had to deal with the corrosive effect of the Jubi's husk on his body, finally, Naruto has had access to our life giving chakra unfiltered for over 200 years, we believe that the physical properties passed down to Asura have become those of Naruto's with the advanced healing offered from being a Jinchuriki. We Biju believe that even without us now, Naruto would continue to exist until the end of time, or until he is killed, either, or finished Kurama flippantly. Are you telling us that he is immortal? asked one of the daimyo, having regained his composure first. Yes and no replied son Goku, he can be killed he just can't die, if you get what we are saying. Wow, whispered the Hokage, to think we are related to an immortal, our longevity must really be something, he professed, looking on at his ancient relative. Excuse me Naruto-sama, daimyos and cages, I wish to put forth an intriguing proposal. We were thinking of having elders of the animal clans play the role of a neutral party. Observing history for us, playing mediator and many other roles. Why not instead, we have Naruto-sama take this position spoke the daimyo for the land of wave. He is more than just a hero for his acts during the fourth shinobi world war. From our understanding of Naruto's life, from the day he drew his first breath he spoke firmly. And the day his parents drew their last, Naruto has been nothing but a savior for our nation, and has never once asked for anything other than being respected and acknowledged, I say today we make history happen, the contribution Naruto has made to the people of the land of waves will never be forgotten. We hold a celebration every year on the 10th of October to recognize the birth of our land's greatest hero, but also what Naruto has done for us. Never before has anyone ever had so many good things to say about him, and he was finding it hard not to get choked up about it. And I do not believe ours is the only country that has Naruto to thank. So, I put forward this proposal, Naruto becomes the elemental nation's ambassador. On the 10th of October we celebrate, not really the birth of such a great man but more the end to the old era and birth of the new era. Because of one man's ability to never give up, and that from this moment on the bestowing of a title befitting of our savior, I have heard this before, in history it is given to those of the generation who are considered the most powerful of the age, and I believe the title has no better fitting than here, continued the daimyo for the land of wave, Naruto's eyes widened considerably as he could only think of one title that fit the description the aged man depicted. 
a title given to the creator of the nine biju that stand before us. Given to a man who started the basis of peace, bringing us out of the warring clans era. A title, truly only befitting to this great man, for he was able to do what no others were, all those before spoke of peace and how they would achieve it, only this man did it at the age of seventeen, there is no one more befitting of the title shinobi no kami than the man who stands before us, a man who will hold the title from the foreseeable future till the end of time finished the daimyo for the land of wave. Everyone was floored, Shima was even croaking a little, tears running down her face, Naruto was struggling to maintain his composure, he thought the day he became Hokage would be the moment his dream of recognition came true, but if what has been proposed comes to pass then, it will mean a new milestone in his life has come to pass. I believe that, that is the best proposal, which I second, by show of hands, those in favor of the proposal put forth, asked the leader of the land of iron. As one the hands of the remaining daimyos and the gokage raised up signifying a unanimous vote, Shima was jumping for joy, patting Naruto on the head, never had they had a summoner who meant so much to the world, he really did their clan proud. I accept, spoke Naruto, moved that so many people thought so highly of him as to be a figure worthy of such a title and honor, Guy would be so pleased, his power of youth shining so brightly that the sands of time were no match for him, you would swear you could hear a shout of eternal youth from beyond the grave. It was at this point he chose to inform the Gokage about the choices made by the animal clans. So as to remain impartial to all, and act as a guide at times, many animal clans made a petition to the Toad clan, requesting to allow the sharing of their summoner, and so a summit was held for the animal clans, in their home world. Naruto was summoned and asked to partake in the discussions pertaining to the petition. The elders from each and every clan were present, even the snake and slug clans. As soon as Naruto was summoned, one could see the influence the presence of a human had on the animal clans that had suffered prolonged separation, their animal instincts receded and they showed a drastic change of character, but it seemed like more than that, they would later find that assumption to be true, Naruto's presence helped bring the best out of the animal clans, they came to the conclusion that it was because Naruto is a Jinchuriki, a human presence with a powerful animal aura. He decided to be a universal summoner, that required a seal tattoo from each clan incorporated into one for ease of application. It was big, the tattoo completely covered his left arm. Up his shoulder, over his chest, up his neck and completely over his back, to be able to distinguish which animal he wished to summon, all he needed was to think the animal, apply blood to a seal on the back of his left hand, then apply chakra to the seal designated for the summon animal. The thought behind choosing which animal you wish to summon activates a locator in the seal to help mold chakra to the right seal, hand seals not required. This news brought great interest to the Gokage, he was to serve as a fail safe to the animal clans should something happen and they not be able to procure a new summoner, or the family they serve or slowly dwindles down to nothing, but it was the next piece of information that would make the Gokage extremely happy. If the Gokage had candidates that they wished to summit for application Naruto was to be summoned with his Hiriishin Kanai, which he then proceeded to give one to all the cages and daimyo, he would then summon the elder council, comprised of the five clan elders picked by the animal clans and it changes every decade, this would allow all to have a say, but no matter what this is for the benefit of their kind. The contracts remained with each summon clan, they would only allow for the contracts to be signed with the presence of Naruto, with Naruto's empathy ability. Summon clans that looked for specific qualities in their summoners were granted a sort of gift, no one wanted a situation similar to Orochimaru, that was why Naruto was asked to become the ambassador for the summon clans. The application process also works the other way around too, animal clans can apply for another summoner, which was the very thing needed by the animal clans that had gone with prolonged separation for such a long time, they needed more contact with humans, the cages took all this under advisement, they would return to their respective villages and pass word to the incorporated minor villages requesting any who believed themselves worthy of holding a contract with summons. Naruto then identified what he had planned for the foreseeable future. He would become a hermit, traveling around like his late sensei. He even planned on taking up where his late sensei left off, the continuation of the Ika Ika series. There was a roar of great approval at the sound of this from everyone in the room, females included. In fact, the great, Great granddaughter of Koyuki Kazuhana volunteered to be material for the first book. The voicing of said statement led to the concussive force at which half the male attendees rocketed back from explosive nose bleeds, while the rest just tried to hide theirs. The Council of Daimyo and Cages decided on the outlines of Naruto's responsibilities and perks. Matters pertaining to the nation were a mandatory attendance, he would be given five days minimum notice like all other would if a meeting were to be held. This allowed for travel time of others and for himself to make arrangements to free himself should he have things planned. One to two days leeway could be given with prior notice so as to inform others of the delay. He would act as a national dignitary to any from outside the elemental nations, he would aid only if necessary in the defense of the nation, he would always act on the best interests of the nation, he is welcome anywhere and everywhere, 
he is not allowed to play judge, jury or executioner at all, however, he may be present at such times, if needed, and offer advice and suggestions. Lastly, he shall be a free man to all, with his final duty to be the scribe of time, record any and all history of the elemental nations, Naruto accepted the terms and the titles that came with the responsibilities, he shall forever be known as Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, elemental ambassador and the shinobi no kami. And so the shinobi no kami walked amongst the living again, centuries had passed as he traveled everywhere, seeing everything, he held no allegiance to any one place, tribe, clan, or land, even though he had family in Konoha, they know that for the peace they share in, he must remain impartial. As time moved on, the elemental nations flourished. Although, as a nation, they were heavily ingrained in tradition. Changers were made for the betterment of the nation as a whole. Technology was slowly becoming more of everyday presence in the elemental nations. Slowly technology that did not rely on chakra was being created. And at the forefront of this technological age was Naruto, leading the charge in both chakra and non-chakra technology, but most still required the application of chakra to use, so it was decided that the civilians would be taught how to properly mold chakra for private use. Sure there were civilians who wanted to be shinobi, but those who didn't were still taught how to mold chakra so everyone was the same, so everyone understood each other. Fuenjutsu became a mandatory subject to teach at all academies. Considering that it was thanks to Fuenjutsu the world had not been destroyed. And that a lot of the technology now, was thanks to Fuenjutsu. But there weren't many who knew much about Fuen, even less that had any real skill and only one master at the time, having access to both his Uzumaki legacy as well as his father's scrolls. He was the one with the only real access and resources to become a master, and knowing that he wouldn't always be able to train new masters, he devised a way of progressive steps among a controlled environment that allow for the instruction of Fuenjutsu. Most new technology was made because he was bored and had come up with some wicked ideas. Throughout the years, Naruto trained harder to unlock the different advanced chakra nature transformations that he had access to, after a few demonstrations of the advanced nature transformations that everyone thought to be Keke Genke and Keke Toda that Naruto was not known to have had before, he received yet another title to add to the ever-growing list, people started to refer to him as Chakra no Senen. The more advanced Chakra nature transformations he unlocked and mastered, the easier it would be for him to start designing and constructing more of the advanced ideas he has. He has access to the five basic nature types, as well as Inten, Yoden and Anmayauden, the initial training to master Inten, Yoden and Anmayauden Chakra was perhaps the hardest Chakra training Naruto had to do ever, it was getting to a stage that the only difference between him and Hagoromo was the eyes they held. Granted there were some skills that even he couldn't do without having the Rinnegan, he had no access offered by the Asura path, human path, animal path, Prada path or the Naraka path because he did not possess the Rinnegan, and the abilities offered by those paths seemed impossible to replicate without the use of the Rinnegan, however with training, he was able to utilize the same abilities as the Diva path, with the ability to manipulate attractive and repulsive forces. And although he could not bring the dead back to life, he had a measure of control over life due to the insane amount of training in the art of medical ninjutsu. Granny Tsunade would be incredibly proud of what he has achieved, comparable to the likes of Hashirama Senju. Naruto became somewhat of scientist, doctor if you would, he always liked being able to help people, and there was no better way than healing, for about a century he studied the human body, everything about it, and then branched out, he had the perfect test subject after all, for all of this, himself. So with the assistance of the biju, the best learning tool in the world and a few centuries, he was able to master many advanced nature transformations, the biggest ones were Mokotan, however it was also the easiest, guess it had to do with his mastering both sage chakras, then again his body did incorporate his prosthetic arm that Granny Tsunade made for Sasuke and him from Hashirama Senju cells, also Hyaden, Yotan, and Kotan. Kotan was a necessity, as a lot of his ideas to come probably won't hold up to anything less, it also becomes unbelievably strong and light when used in conjunction with Yodan for body modification, however, if Inten Chakra is used in conjunction with Kotan, it becomes extremely malleable, later with the removal of Inten Chakra from the metal, it becomes unbelievably strong and light. He also discovered that if you bolster Mokotan with Yodan, it becomes even more powerful than before, the life chakra offered by Yodan could possibly affect any and all of the advanced nature transformations, but that is worth exploring at a later date. Break Uzu Shiogakir, far off the coast of the elemental nations, East Blue. We now find Naruto on the shores of Uzu no Kuni, starring at what was once the homeland of his people, it has been 1500 years since the end of the fourth shinobi world war, things have stayed much the same in the elemental nations, it has only moved into a more industrialized era. Having searched for the island off the coast of Hai no Kuni, he had no luck finding it, he summoned some from the shark clan to assist in his search, perhaps the island had sunk, 
unfortunately they were unable to find anything where the island should be. Naruto, really wanting to find the home of his ancestors made trips to Kaminari no Kuni and Mizu no Kuni to learn what happened from their history, the island was not destroyed enough for there to be no trace of it left where it should be. Going back to where the island was located Naruto summoned a member of the Hawk clan to assist him in finding Uzu no Kuni, after weeks of searching they finally found it, far off the coast of Kaminari no Kuni and Mizu no Kuni. How the island ended all the way out here, he didn't know, but he was going to search for clues. Well this place has seen better days, said Naruto out loud to nobody, because there was nobody around for miles, of course, he could have been speaking to his nine tenants. Guess I should nt be too surprised that this is the kind of resistance my ancestors put up to protect home and people, he commented before moving on through the rubble of Uzushiogakur, this should have been his home, well never too late to make it so. You are going to need a lot of help to restore this place Naruto, I think you should use that new jutsu to let us out, that way we can lend a hand, spoke Matabi, itching to stretch her legs outside the seal. Hey, I am quite happy to sit around here and do nothing, I am not some animal for slave labor, shouted Kurama, indignant at the thought of being used as such. Well, too bad Kurama, everyone is going to need to pull his or her weight to help restore our new home, and you have plenty to pull, said Naruto with big grin on his face preparing to use his new jutsu. Then suddenly something clicked and thought about what he said, he just knocked on death's door, feeling the overwhelming sensation of Kurama trying to drag him into the seal, he resisted as much as humanly possible, but his subconscious was eventually dragged into the seal kicking and screaming. Kurama grabbed him in her hands and squeezed wondering if he would pop. Did you just call me fat? She shouted at him still squeezing and now shaking poor Naruto furiously, he tried to say something, anything, but not a single sound came out, he seriously thought he was about to die, he swore he saw death reaching for him, until he was launched into the wall of his mind, the last thing he swear he saw was death snapping his fingers indignantly as if to say he almost had him that time. Sorry Naruto wheezed out before passing out, outside Naruto could be found standing, not moving an inch, completely frozen with a blank look on his face. Kurama you almost broke him, reprimanded Yuki, however, you could hear the undercurrent of humor in his voice. Eventually Naruto came around, and proceeded to utilize his new jutsu, he needed to thank old man Hagoromo for his help in creating it. Okie dokie spoke Naruto as he went through the necessary hand seals, nine beasts summoning jutsu he shouted. A massive puff of smoke cleared to reveal all nine biju standing before him, they started to get to work clearing the island of debris while Naruto moved to investigate the massive tree in the center of the island, for all the damage done to the island, very little seemed to have been done to the tree, the closer he made it to the tree the more he realized just how big a difference there was between him and the tree, hell, the biju seemed small in comparison. Having finally reached the base of the tree, he summoned a bunch of shadow clones and had them race around the tree and look for anything significant while he found himself interested in the edge of a cliff off in the distance. Feeling something and someone, a life force that seems shielded, standing on top of the cliff he slowly walked down the side, searching for this person and thing, no things he corrected, there is more than one, it is harder to tell from a distance but the closer I get the more I feel he thought. Soon he came upon a massive cave opening, peering into the cave. He found himself looking at what appeared to be a massive ship, no wonder the cave entrance was so big, it needed to fit that inside, out of the corner of his eye, he saw movement on board the vessel, a bunch of people wandering around upon the deck in white uniforms, or so he assumed, I mean they were all wearing the same thing, walking inside the cave but staying on the ceiling of the cave to maintain cover, he found a tunnel that seemed to run into the cliff. Feeling the need to know of everyone here, not liking that there were people here who did not belong. Naruto started gathering nature chakra as he moved forward, all those years of training finally paid off, no longer limited to staying still to gather nature chakra, it also helped that the first Hokage's cells had fully integrated into his DNA, his prosthetic arm made from the first Hokage's cells by Granny Tsunade having become one with him now, it did not even look any different from how his arm used to look. There was no pigmentation or ocular change having finally become a master sage, gathering nature chakra when he was first taught was only the gathering of physical nature chakra, having spent time learning how to gather spiritual nature chakra with the help of the crow clan, he could now boast as being the only person, besides old man Hagoromo, to master nature chakra and becoming a master sage. Feeling the energy of everything on the island, he could feel three distinct types, the biju, the humans and whatever these last things were they gave of a similar feeling to the biju, just underdeveloped, deciding he wanted answers to some of his questions, Naruto was about to drop down onto the deck of the ship. That was until out came someone who was different to the others, he was dressed differently, more regal, than everyone else around him, however, he had on the same symbol, blue bird thing, however, he was dressed in a brown suit as opposed to the white wear everyone else wore, with a gold shouldered, white coat over top. 
This person made his way to the back of the stern, near where Naruto was above him, he seemed to be waiting for something to happen. Are you going to show yourself, or are you going to continue to hide? asked the mariner. Baffled as to how this person knew he was here, Naruto dropped from the ceiling of the cave to behind the individual in question. Turning around the mariner came face to face with a very youthful individual, the youthful look of the individual threw the mariner through the loop, he was not expecting some kid to be able to infiltrate this base of operations. You are not what I was expecting, but your presence is similar to someone I have come across before, tell me boy, who are you and what are you doing here? This island is restricted, asked the mariner, the answer caused the mariner to narrow his eyes. Ah ha 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 Naruto laughed, so hard he had trouble breathing, that was a good one, please no more, it hurts to laugh that hard, slowly composing himself, he was bought out of his musings at the next statement that left the mariner's mouth. This island is under the ownership and control of the world government, trespassing is a crime punishable by death, stated the mariner as he slowly moved his arms out of the cloak preparing to deliver absolute justice, so, once again I ask you, who are you and what are you doing here? Naruto narrowed his eyes at that statement, if the death threat was not enough, the acclaimed ownership of an island rightfully belonging to him was worthy of an ass kicking of grand magnitude. I am sorry, I don't think I heard you correctly, spoke Naruto as he slowly drew on the power of Shukaku, using the cloak form as an intimidation technique, alerting the nine biju to the situation at hand. The biju having stopped what they were doing and high tailed it to where they could sense Naruto each launching of the cliff to land lightly on or heavily in the water. We find Naruto in a cloak similar to his Kyubi chakra mode except with more of Shukaku's curse seals showing, holding a chakra receiver in each and the six truth seeking balls floating behind him, in front of him we have, the mariner no longer in his coat with his sleeves pushed up and hit on his head, upon hearing a loud noise of something entering the water behind him, he takes his eyes of the boy in front only to be surprised by the sight behind him. Sea kings whispered the mariner looking on at the weird sea kings surrounding the only entry and exit of the cave. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to alert you, you don't need to worry about this little scuffle. I know it may seem overkill but this asshole firstly threatens me and then thinks he can claim ownership of something that does not rightfully belong to him, please continue clearing the island, it'll be finished down here soon, shouted Naruto over to the biju. Completely baffled as to what was happening, the mariner watched on as the boy tried to order around sea kings, like that was going to happen he thought, snorting in amusement, that was until he realized that he would need to deal with the blonde quickly if he also had to contend with these sea kings as well. To the complete and utter shock of the mariner, the orange fox based sea king nodded its head before all of them left, seven of them walking away on top of the water, turning back to the blonde with a look of astonishment on his face, wondering how he ordered around sea kings, moving into position to engage the blonde in combat. You going to answer my questions? asked the mariner. Sure, if you can oblige as well, um, what were your questions again? asked Naruto as he scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Growling under his breath at this infuriating individual, who are you and what are you doing here? he shouted. On the outside he looked thoughtful, however, on the inside he was laughing at how easy it was to get under the skin of some people, so fun messing with people he thought, oh, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze he stated courteously before his voice took on a deeper and darker tone, and I am here because this island is the home of my ancestors, and as I am one of the only remaining Uzumaki left, this island and everything on, in and around are property that belongs to me. Shanks whispers the mariner having heard the name Uzumaki before. Now for my questions, who are you and what are you doing here on my island? asks the aggravated blonde. My name is Mozambia and I am a rear admiral in the world government marines, as to why I am here is none of your business, this island now belongs to the world government, got a problem with that, then take it up with them. Who the fuck is the world government? Moreover, do you seriously think I give a damn that you think you can claim something and that would be it, now about that ass kicking I spoke of earlier. At the mention of the fight to come, Mozambia launched himself at Naruto preparing to deliver a hockey infused punch before securing him with sea stone cuffs, that, however, was not going to happen, for as soon as he was upon the blonde, he disappeared right before his eyes. Not giving this now identified marine a chance to anticipate his attacks, Naruto threw copies of his father's famous kanai all over the deck, before simply vanishing from sight, it was at this point that the ass kicking of grand magnitude occurred, it was so one sided that it is not even worth mentioning, the rear admiral and subordinates were thoroughly thrashed. After collecting his kanai, Naruto slowly made his way down the corridor towards the other life signs he could feel, stopping in front of the door, Naruto ready to Rasengan to destroy the metal door in front of him, he liked to make an entrance. The door buckled to the jutsu before it was blown off its hinges and crashed into the wall on the other side of the room. Knock, knock, he joked as he walked in to find people further inside in what appeared to be a laboratory, nothing freaky like what Orochimaru had in his, crowded at the back, one man moved forward to talk to this intruder. 
Who are you? asked the tall man, apparently the boss of those around him if he was to hazard a guess. Slowly Naruto release his pull on his Shukaku cloak mode. Finally returning to normal, we find Naruto back in his blue open vest with Uzumaki's swirl on the back with nine tomo under the clan symbol. Black pants with red knees hanging loosely around his ankles, a short-sleeved long white haori, much like his father's the only difference being he had orange flames licking the edge of the tail, as well as the sleeves, on the back. Written in kanji was the title given to him by the gokage and daimyos, shinobi no kami written down the length of it with a rene sharingan at the top. Hello, I am Naruto and you are trespassing on my island he said with a large grin on his face that seemed to promise pain should anyone start anything. I beg your pardon, but this island and everything in, on and around belong to the world government and are under the protection of the world government, granted that we haven't been here very long, when we first came here, there was no one here or around that could lay claim to the island, therefore, for all intent and purpose, the land was uninhabited, allowing anyone to lay claim to it, what proof do you have that you are the rightful owner of this land, where did you come from? There isn't any land for hundreds of miles, argued the head scientist. Okay, first, I have had enough of hearing about some world government, I don't know what it is nor do I follow them, shouted Naruto, then suddenly scratching his chin in thought, at least I don't believe I do, how do you know if you're a part of this world government, asked Naruto. One of the other scientists pointed to the wall where a flag was hung, that is the symbol of the world government, she said. Naruto looked hard at it then as if a light bulb went off in his head, he turned to them with a look of conclusive thought. The scientists looked on as the blonde came to some epiphany, all assumed that he knew that in which they speak. I have no idea what that is, nor have I ever seen anything like it, he answered with a large grin, causing all scientists to face palm, so, now that we have established that I am not a citizen of this world government, they have no jurisdiction over me or this island that is in fact part of the elemental nations. What are the elemental nations? asked a curious scientist, all others nodding their head agreeing with the question as they too would like to know of which island he spoke. You don't know? asked Naruto surprised by that question, the massive continent back, here Naruto adjusted himself to all directions he faced since arriving on the island to make sure he indicated where they were properly, that way, he finished indicating west-south-west. There are more uncharted islands close to here? asked the head scientist. Continent Naruto reiterated, the elemental nations is not some fucking island, it's huge, however when you head too far south the wind all of a sudden dies of completely, weird as hell, oh, and no boat sails to far south either everything just stops if you do. That sounds like the calm belt, no one has ever come this far south in the east blue, most assumed there was nothing here, well nothing ever seemed to come from here, so it was a likely assumption, spoke the head scientist to his colleagues, how did you get here? he asked looking back at the stranger. Oh I got a lift from, wait a goddamn minute, you are still on my island, shouted Naruto pissed that they had gotten off topic, you ask me what proof I have that this island belongs to me, well when it reacts to my blood then you will have your answer stated Naruto as he took out one of his special kanai. Wait, what do you mean react to your blood? asked the head scientist. Who are you? I am getting sick of you knowing who I am, yet you have yet to introduce yourself spoke Naruto, pausing just before slicing open his hand. I am Dr. Vega Punk, answered the now known doc. Well doc, I was told by my mum that when I came to my homeland, all I needed to do was spill my blood on the soil and it would recognize me as an Uzumaki, now. Pay close attention as I have no idea as to what is going to happen, said Naruto as he drove the dagger through his hand, sure it hurt like hell, but it was the only way to get around his healing factor. Blood ran down the tip of the blade and started to pool at the feet of Naruto, Naruto removed the kanai quickly so not to prolong his pain, the blood began to move until it formed the Uzumaki clan symbol, the whirlpool design, once completed the blood glowed bright before being absorbed into the soil, that is when the ground started to shake and the walls rumbled. Gradually the walls started to close over all cupboards, desks and cabinets until the only Naruto and the scientist were left. Now I would very much appreciate it if you would kindly get the fuck off my island spoke Naruto with a grin plastered on his face as he pointed over his shoulder with his thumb, indicating the door behind him. Not waiting around to see the consequences of disobeying, the scientists made their way back to the marine ship docked in the cave, it was only once they were aboard, did they realize everything they left in the lab. Wait shouted dr vega punk as he tried to make his way back down the gangplank and back to the lab we need to gather our things before we go naruto having none of that knocked the gangplank off into the water yeah that not going to happen consider everything in their mind now spoke naruto as he stood there waiting for the ship to depart you can't do that everything in that room belongs to the world government you have no right to take it away moreover our creations are still there you can't just have them they're ours shouted the doc now you know how I feel about you trying to take my island as yours, 
consider them compensation for not kicking all your asses shouted Naruto, wound up by the audacity of this doctor. Have a safe trip and don't come back now, Yahiri cheered as they started forward. Jumping down onto the water Naruto followed behind them to make sure they departed away from the elemental nations. Upon the edge of the cliff we find the nine biju watching as the ship departs, away from them and the elemental nations. Using a shunshin Naruto appears next to Kurama on top of the cliff. What? No send off for them? Asked Naruto. Well you are usually pissy after we do, so why should we now? Asked Shukaku. Well, yeah, you guys are loud, however, I am prepared now Naruto finished with a grin on his face. Oh, well if you insist, announced Kurama as she and the others got ready to let loose a roar that would leave a lasting impression. Well it turns out Naruto was not as prepared as he believed, either that or he was so close it didn't matter, the devastating roars left everything ringing, even his eyes seemed to ring, yet he did not know how that was possible. Break on board the marine ship departing Uzushiogakure. Where is Vice Admiral Mozambia? asked Dr. Vega Punk, looking for the first mate. He is in his quarters dock, and I wouldn't bother disturbing him, he is unconscious after his run-in with the strange man from that island spoke the XO, suddenly, a deafening roar rocked the boat and disturbed the calm waters, everyone looked back at the island to see nine great beasts standing on the cliff overlooking their departure. Well I am glad we left when we did, I for one do not want to fight beasts of that caliber spoke the XO as the crew scrambled about on deck. XO, chart a course straight for Marineford, with the modifications made to this vessel we should have no problem moving through the comm belt and onto the grand line spoke Dr. Vega Punk as he made his was towards the rear admiral's cabin, ill see to the captain, once he is up we will call through to commander in chief explaining all that we can before our arrival, he may like to know that there are more uncharted lands further past the island we were able to go to with our supplies. You heard Dr. Vega Punk, turn us 90 degrees starboard, heading 180 degrees due south, and form the XO to the crew. Really, more lands? asked the XO. Yes, they appear to back onto the comm belt and if my calculations are correct it is where we refer to the quadrant as the Great Beast Graveyard, the stretch where none of our ships make it through to the East Blue because of the Sea Kings in that area sea stone coated ships or not, that is according to Naruto, spoke the dock as he moved into the captain's quarters with the XO behind him. Naruto? Asked the XO the man whom we encountered on the island claiming it to be his, explained the dock. Oh, well, I must ask what it is you want to do about this situation? Asked the XO knowing that what the dock was working on back on that island in the East Blue was an unprecedented breakthrough that would give the marines the edge needed against some of the more dangerous pirates that they deal with. We must get back our experiments before anything can be done with them, also, all notes on our research was left behind and sealed by the walls after reacting to Naruto's blood, never before have I seen anything like that, it must have been a safety feature that, if what he said is to be believed, responded to the genome in his blood, recognizing him as a great descendant of the people who once inhabited the island, answered the dock, while looking over the damage done to the captain. Uzumaki whispered the captain as he was slowly coming around. Uzumaki? questioned the dock, you mean Shanks? He inquired further, not many knew Shanks' last name, but that was the only person who came to mind when the captain whispered Uzumaki. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze uttered the captain in a hoarse voice, the pain was crippling, the sudden gasp of air the dock drew in at hearing that information let the captain know he had been heard and understood. Are you absolutely certain? asked the dock. If this was true, then this situation could be catastrophic if action was not taken immediately, a stiff nod of his head was all the doc got in response. Deciding that protocol could be forgotten for the meantime, Vega Punk knew he needed to inform the commander in chief and fleet Admiral Kong of everything now. XO organized the crew to make haste for Marineford in the best possible time, I am going to make a call on the transponder snail, the commander in chief and fleet Admiral Kong need to know about this right away spoke the doc as he made his way to the cabin door. Is it really that bad? asked the XO, I heard you mention red haired Shanks, what does he have to do with all this? he asks perplexed. Shanks last name is Uzumaki, and the man from the island's name is, hinted the doc. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze whispered the XO, now following where this was leading. Either it is the biggest and most terrifying coincidence I have ever come across or this is a joke of epic proportion, I am leaning towards the earlier spoke the doc, making his way out of the cabin towards the communication room on board the ship. Break Uzushiogakure, far off the coast of the elemental nations, East Blue. All right guys, how did you go in clearing the island? Asked Naruto as he addressed the biju. Waste of fucking time complained son Goku, everything we threw away into the ocean only came back just as everything stated shaking, then, all the buildings proceeded to repair themselves, weirdest fucking thing I have ever seen, it's like time inverted so the buildings became what they once were. 
The Biju looked down to see Naruto, stars in his eyes, staring off at what once was the ruins of Uzushiogakure, only to be replaced by a reconstructed civilization. Wow, this place looks brand new, incredible Naruto shouted in joy. Having released the jutsu on the Biju, Naruto maneuvered his way through town towards where the memories from his clones guided him to, the base of the great tree. On the southern facing side was an archway with a corridor leading into the tree, following it inwards and upwards. Naruto found himself in the center of what had to be the largest library he had ever seen. Moreover, everything seemed like it was in immaculate condition. Wow, that is a lot of books. Bewildered by the sheer volume of books this library held, he knew it would take him many lifetimes to read all of them. Lucky for him, he was a master of the greatest learning tool in the world. Creating five dozen clones, he sent them to search for different areas and start reading. The more interesting and useful the information was, the more he wanted reading it. He created 100 more clones to explore the island completely while he explored the upper levels of the giant ass tree. Break on board the marine ship heading to Marineford from East Blue. Commander in Chief and Fleet Admiral, this is Dr. Vega Punk, spoke the doc starting off introductions. What can we do for you doctor? came the voice of the Fleet Admiral. I have some disturbing news to inform you of, not long ago. My scientist and I were forced to leave Hidden Island, the new island discovered in the East Blue that has not been chartered yet where we were conducting experiments, we were forced to leave by one individual who has bedridden the captain, Rear Admiral Mozambia, we are currently en route to Marineford, where we hope to gather reinforcements and make our way back to the East Blue to resecure the island and our research spoke the doc, but was cut off by the voice of the commander-in-chief. Doctor, are you saying that some things were left on the island? He asked. No, I am saying everything was left on the island, we never had the chance to secure anything before the earth started shifting and sealing off all equipment, notes and the experiments, the doc explained. What? shouted the fleet admiral, the doctor then began to give the commander in chief and fleet admiral a rundown of everything he could. We will have a buster call ready and waiting for when you arrive at Marineford, on board will be Garp and Sengoku, I want the island secured and this nation investigated, if possible secure peaceful ties with them as I inform the Gorosei of this new piece of information, to think that there are more uncharted lands out there. What is your E.T. A to Marineford? asked the commander in chief. We should be arriving at 2100 in two days, that is, if all goes to plan, answered the doc. Very well, instead, we will have the buster call rendezvous with you en route to save you time. Once they are fully stocked for such a trip, you will be notified. Until then, have Rear Admiral Mozambia contact us when he is able to regarding his fight with this Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I am curious as to if there is any relation between him and Shanks spoke the fleet admiral thinking of the up and coming young boy that is sailing on board gold d roger's ship that was my assumption as well when i first heard his full name we have never heard about any other uzumaki i recommend that shanks wanted poster b update change his title so as to draw attention away from his last name because if there is a connection between the two who knows what could happen suggested the doc that could pose trouble indeed we will look into it doctor thank you for this update hope to be hearing good news from you soon spoke the commander-in-chief before ending the transmission. Dr. Vega Punk left the communications room, making his way to find the XO and inform him of what was happening. Break Uzu Shiogakir, far off the coast of the Elemental Nations, East Blue. Hey boss, we think we found a seal that may be able to relocate the island closer to the Elemental Nations, spoke one of the many Naruto clones. Well, what do you need me for? asked Naruto. I would like nothing better than to relocate the island back closer to the elemental nations and you know this, so hop to it then. Well boss you see, we need your blood to enable the seal, and you may want to take a look at it before you do, in case we missed anything, said the clone. Fine, lead the way, addressed Naruto as he followed his clone to the seal. They made their way to the island in the center of the island, there etched into the stone, right in the middle of the island was a large seal, after reviewing the seal for the better part of an hour, figured it would be good to bounce ideas off his clones. From what I can make of this ancient seal, it utilizes a godly amount of chakra and enough blood to fill in the etchings in the stone. It then transports the island back to its true location. Does that sound about right to you? He asked his clone. Also, it appears that this seal is capable of being utilized by ten people, designated by the points surrounding the seal, though I do not believe they require blood, just chakra, replied the clone. I was of the same opinion, replied Naruto. Well, we might as well begin sucking me dry of blood sooner rather than later. As we both know I will not be able to spill enough blood to fill this seal in one go, he said flippantly. Hey Kurama, Naruto said talking out loud to internal tenant, can you utilize a little extra chakra to help replenish the blood I am going to lose quickly, we are going to need a lot to fill in the seal and it may take a couple days. Sure, I am assuming you are going to utilize each of us for the process of transporting the island? asked Kurama. Yep, 
Figured you guys and gals would like out for a bit. Naruto spoke, addressing his biju tenants, slowly Naruto made his way into the seal as his clone unseal medical equipment. And proceeded to attach it to the boss, in both arms, Naruto found himself in the middle of his biju tenants, you know, it would be easier if I could just address you all as guys, he spoke gaining some of their attention, instead of having to single out the different sexes, I mean seriously, does it really matter that I address you all as guys, I know who the gals are among you, it would just save time each time. We would appreciate it if you continued to address us with distinction, some of us have gone long enough, being addressed as male, when in fact we are female, spoke Chomei having had to suffer that until her last Jinchuriki. You still haven't told me how it is as entities of chakra you came to have a sexual makeup, asked Naruto as Kurama's chakra washed over him assisting in the reproduction of red blood cells. It is like any Naruto, we were created this way, and while we may not have ever reproduced, it does not mean that we can't, our father Hagoromo created us with a certain makeup in mind. Otherwise, how would you derive an answer in regards to our consciousness? asked Matabi. We are sentient like all others, we feel and express emotions, we have access to all five senses, our bodies are only pure chakra at two circumstances. Upon sealing and utilizing out chakra like killer bee would, and upon reforming should we die with our jinchuriki, at all other times our body is flesh and blood too, continued Gyuki following on from Matabi's train of thought. Okay. We have been together for over 1500 years and now is the time you wish to bring this up? Had you told me earlier, I would have looked at helping you all get laid, god damn I would be the best wingman, spoke Naruto with such seriousness that after a comical delay, all the biju face planted. Still got it were the lingering words of Naruto as he exited the seal. Back outside in the real world, Naruto's clone was finished for the day, packing and storing away all blood taken, they would continue on tomorrow but they had more than half of the required blood for the seal, deciding to settle in for the night. Naruto made his way to the library to find all his clones in one section reading what there was to offer. I thought I told you guys to spread out and read all different sections? asked Naruto. Yeah boss, you did but you also said the more interesting the topic the more you wanted reading in that section, well this is the most interesting section, ideas of technological advancement that is millennia ahead of anything we have seen, however, everything predates us, it is like a cataclysmic event that restarted the world millennia ago, everything here would allow for the use without the need to have access to chakra explained the clone that originally chose that section. Really? asked Naruto eager to learn what his clones have learnt. Okay, apply the seal that segments your memories and doesn't allow the information of others to influence, said Naruto watching as each applied a seal designed by him to help contain the memories of each clone to said clone and himself, it allowed access to the information easier and you wouldn't have cross feed from others working on different things. This process also allowed Naruto to access knowledge at will with choice, not just absorbing everything in one go, that could have catastrophic results, even for him, making himself comfy on the reclining couch, he with the help of his tenants sifted through the memories of the clones, creating a clone Naruto had to dispel to inform his other clones to dispel in groups of five every five minutes. Break the next day we find Naruto snoring, hanging half on, half off the recliner, face pressed against the wooden floor, drool pooling around his face. Wake up Naruto! roared Isobu inside Naruto's head, causing the man to wake in a fright, only to face plant back into the drool covered floor. Uh, why you have to be so mean? asked Naruto, anime tears streaming down his face. I don't, just consider it payback for your rude comment yesterday regarding our sexual desires, answered Isobu, leaving Naruto to his thought. Hey, I would be the best wingman, stated Naruto as if it was a set fact. Chirp, chirp all Naruto heard was crickets as an answer. Whatever, mumbled Naruto as he went to one of the houses to utilize its bathroom. The day continued on much like the last, however, Naruto created over 300 clones to get started on all the book sections in the library, the information his clones acquired yesterday regarding the advanced technology was outstanding, he had ideas similar in nature without anything to help as building blocks, but there was a downside. To power some of the technology required a recourse that caused damage to the planet later on, apparently this caused a significant effect on the planet's climate but was caused by continued planetary use, would one island cause the same effect? Probably not, however, would you want to hand over to the later generations problems caused by your generation? Never. Doing so shows little regard for the future of your people. So, unless a suitable solution could be found, any and everything relating to the use of a fossil fuel called crude oil would have to have a work around requiring chakra until then, it would also be difficult to acquire something that is not listed in the books, obviously, they left out anything remotely related to crude oil and how to procure it. As Naruto laid on the medical table, having his blood drained, he was approached by a clone, creating a chair utilizing his Mokuton abilities. The clone sat down next to Naruto to explain what he had come across. Boss, I think we may want to hold off on the teleportation seal for a moment, 
he spoke piquing Naruto's interest. And why is that? asked Naruto, curious as to why he would should hold off on moving the island back to the elemental nations. Well boss, I don't think that the elemental nations is where the island originally came from, answered the clone. What would make you think otherwise? asked Naruto, his curiosity reaching new levels. I came across this journal that was written by some of our earliest ancestors, in it, it states that an expedition set out to explore the world, having traveled all over this world, it came to a place where the sea was as chaotic as the whims of a child, it defied the very laws of physics without the use of chakra, spoke the clone as it recited bit and pieces of the journal to the boss. It says here that on the sea that was chaos given form. Their vessel was destroyed, and the writer of this journal was the only one. Assumed, to have survived, he awoke on the shore of this island and found most of what we see here today, summoning his clan summon, he requested that it make its way back to their village elder and inform them of what has happened, tell them that he has found an island that is full of information, which is uninhabited, yet contains housing and shelter more advanced than what is seen in the elemental nations at the time. The clan summon reverse summoned himself to the village elder of its summoner, after much discussing, with information traveling back and forth, a seal was devised and which would allow them to summon the island and its occupant to anywhere they chose, they decided that off the coast of Hai no Kuni would be the best spot, that way they were close to their relatives, the Senju. Ten of their strongest seal masters were used for this teleportation, summon of the island. The elder had their summon take the target seal necessary for the process to work back to the island and have the Uzumaki there inscribe it into something, the Uzumaki stuck on the island inscribed it into the large tree found on the island, then with the combined might of the ten strongest seal masters and almost all the chakra that the island Uzumaki had they were able to transport, summon it to their chosen location. Later as things started to escalate, the Uzumaki conceived a seal that would send the island back to where it originally came if they grew tired of the constant warring, transporting them along with it, finished the clone, one would assume that they would have attempted to use it when attacked by two great villages, but probably never got the chance. Hmm, would moving further away be any different than staying here, I mean, as it is we are so far out that vessels will probably not come here, so I would have to use my Hiraishin jutsu to get to and from the mainland, asked Naruto to his clone. I say, what the hell, boss, not like it could get any worse, answered to clone. Well then we will do it, plus, I have this feeling that something is going to happen soon, we will organize it for midday, said Naruto with his big grin plastered over his face. Break somewhere in the calm belt, headed for Hidden Island. I still can't believe that we found the final continent, I wonder how they have progressed without any access to the rest of the world, surely they would have to be pretty self-sufficient, don't you think so, Sengoku? asked Garp as they finally made it into the East Blue. I believe that we could be in for a treat, I just hope the world noble, Sanjil Mac, keeps his nose clean, we are going to a place that has survived for however long without needing anything, however, I must ask if it was wise to bring Sakazuki along on this voyage, you know how he gets sometimes, remarked Sengoku, regarding one of Garp's less sound ideas. That is why I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for him to come along, we'll teach him how to deal with others peacefully, for one never knows the consequences one's actions until after you have pissed of the wrong people, answered Garp. Sounds like you were talking about you and your wife, alleged Sengoku with a small smirk on his face. Was it that obvious? asked Garp as he cracked up laughing at the current train of thought, Sengoku joining along too. We are coming upon Hidden Island, sir remarked a crew member to Garp and Sengoku. That was quicker than expected noted Garp, assuming they still had a few hours. Aye sir, these new marine ships are faster than the previous model replied the crew member as he made his way back into the ship. Might as well get ready then, once we finish securing the island we will separate from the fleet and make way to the nearest land, spoke Sengoku as they made their way towards the forecastle. Break Uzu Shiogakir, far off the coast of the elemental nations, East Blue. Naruto was preparing for the jutsu just as the memories of one of his clones came back to him. Son of a bitch, exclaimed Naruto, need to speed things up, he said, racing through hand seals, nine beasts summoning jutsu he yelled slamming his hands on the ground. Take up positions everyone with at least an appendage in the channel circle, clones, start to spread my blood everywhere in the seal. I'll warn them off and try deterring them while you make sure everything is in place, dispel once you are complete and I'll be back in a flash, said Naruto as he drew on his six paths sage mode. Disappearing I a golden flash, Naruto can be found standing on the cliff overlooking the ocean as marine ships, much bigger than the last one approached his island, unsealing a Hiraishin kanai from the storage seal in the underside of his fingerless glove. Naruto threw the kanai in front of the lead ship, arriving before his kanai touched the water. Naruto stood 500 meters of shore, 150 meters from the marine ships. Flaring his chakra started to cause large waves on the once peaceful ocean, waves that broke over the bow of the ships. Sails were raised on board the ships, 
slowing their approach to the person seemingly standing on the ocean surface, glowing gold. The lead ship stopped 30 meters from Naruto, while all others pulled up behind it. I thought I told you to never come back, yelled Naruto at the familiar face on the bow of the lead ship. And what made you think that I would listen to anything you had to say, spoke the doc, intrigued as to how this man was standing on the surface of the water as if it were solid ground, how are you doing that, he asked Naruto pointing at his feet. Yeah, I am not going to be telling you shit anymore, he returned cordially, releasing his hold on the chakra rods, they dissolved into nothing, I warned you to never come back, Naruto spoke before extending his palm towards the two outer ships of the fleet, slowly he gathered chakra into his hands, bits of red and blue chakra slowly started to form a black condensed ball of pure chakra. Garp having seen the start of a coming attack, moved to the cannonball stowages, grabbing two, he made his way back to the bow and launched them at the figure, believed to be Naruto, watching the collision as smoke impeded their vision, Garp's eyes narrowed, something intercepted the cannonballs before they could make contact with him. As the smoke slowly cleared, there in front of them was an uninjured Naruto, protected by what used to be two of the black balls that were floating around his back, I say used to, because at the moment they resemble a thin, strong circular shield more than anything, looking towards the balls in his hands, the noticed that they were smaller, and gradually becoming more compressed. Naruto, had enough of play around grabbed both of the tiny bijudamas and crushed them in his hands, light began to shine out of his palms, which started to worry everyone on board the ship, opening his palms out at the end ships, everyone was shocked to see giant beams of light emerge from his palms, racing towards the marine ships, the ships were completely obliterated, nothing remained. Naruto, never having taken his eyes off the lead ship, scrunched his face up in a frown before shouting to them, I never wanted to do this, but you left me no choice. You come bearing warships and think to strong arm me into moving off the island, MY island, I let you leave, I was happy to let bygones be bygones, but no, instead of being happy you were all allowed to leave peacefully and alive, you return bearing death, as the inheritor and owner of that island, I had every right to execute anyone and everyone trespassing on my island, the lives of everyone on board those ships is on your hands doc, their blood is on your hands. The doctor was absolutely mortified, he never thought about it like that, but then he remembered why it is they came back, and oh, he roared, had you let us take what belonged to us in the first place, then none of this would have happened, their blood is on yours, he seethed. You are talking about the experiments aren't you, asked the blonde, getting a nod in return from the doc. Doc what you were experimenting on, where did you find it, because I could feel traces of them on the island in locations different to where they currently are, they were originally from the island weren't they, asked Naruto, he received no response. That's what I thought, as I stated when I made you leave, anything and everything on that island belongs to me. He roared at the end, releasing his monumental chakra for added flair, like I said earlier, had you just continued on your way and moved on, none of you would be here right now, meaning those two ships would not have been destroyed, their blood is on your hands. Are we at the final continent yet? Asked Saint Jul Mac making his way towards the front of the ship to where everyone else was. What is everyone starring at? He asked as he knocked people out of the way so he could make his way to the front. Before his very eyes, there on the water was a golden man standing on the water, capture him, I must add him to my collection, shouted Saint Jul Mac looking at Sengoku while pointing at Naruto. I am sorry Saint Jul Mac Sama that will not be possible, he has destroyed two marine ships, and is therefore now a wanted man replied Sengoku in a crisp manner. Really? Where is the debris from the ships? asked Saint Jul Mac. There isn't any as the attack he used vaporized the ships completely, remarked Garp, struggling with the needless deaths of so many sailors. Oh, replied Saint Jul Mac downtrodden at not acquiring a new part to his collection, well, might as well have him stuffed, he continued as he pointed his cane at the golden man standing on the water, before pulling the hidden trigger for the gun mechanism inside. Naruto watched on as a couple people conversed on the lead ship, then finally the weird figure with a bubble helmet lifted and pointed a cane at him, thinking nothing of it he ignored the man until he heard the sound of what he assumed was a gun, then he felt the pinprick of a sting to his chest, right in the only space not covered by clothing. Everyone on board the ship had moved to intercept the world noble before he could do something so foolish, but they just weren't quick enough, they watched on as the bullet pierced Naruto right in the chest, they were fucking baffled, the man takes two cannonballs and nothing happens, but gets hit by a bullet. The amazing thing was that Saint Jul Mac managed to hit him from so far away and with pre and trustworthy equipment. They watch as Naruto looked down at his chest before looking back at the man who shot him. I did it, I killed him, he is my trophy, shouted Saint Jul Mac repetitiously while the others just watched what the blonde was going to do next, and they weren't upset. Slowly, Naruto's body moved the bullet back out of the hole it had come through, falling from his chest and landing in the ocean, a little trail of blood lingering as it sank to the bottom. Then the wound closed up before everyone's eyes. 
Naruto rubbed the phantom pain on his chest before his eyes narrowed on the one who shot him, disappearing, then reappearing a moment later but with Saint Mac clutched in the front of his suit in one hand, Naruto popped the bubble around his head before he clashed heads with the asshole that shot him. I am going to enjoy this, Naruto snarled in the face of the world noble, slowly he gathered chakra in his head like before, this time however it was his regular chakra as he slowly formed a small Rasengan that, those watching could see growing more and more. Wait, shouted Sengoku, knowing he had to do something before a world noble was killed in front of him, he may not like them but he was sworn to protect, killing a world noble is the worst committable crime doing so means we will hunt you forever. What is a world noble? asked Naruto, knowing he should try and get as much information as possible while stalling for time. They are the ancestors of those who created the world government over 700 years ago, answered Garp, thinking he too should help out, but would much rather watch as the noble gets a pounding. I have to tell you, from what I have seen so far, I am not liking anything about this world government, and I really feel like I would be doing the world a favor by getting rid of him, call it intuition if you will and you can't expect me to play nice after he shot me, he shouted at the end, driving home his point. I will have you butchered touching me, I will have your family slaughtered, like the pigs they are, no one precious to you will be safe, nobody who has heard of you will be safe, exclaimed Saint Jul Mac struggled in the grip of Naruto. And that was the kicker, now Naruto knew that this person was nothing but scum. You think yourself high and mighty because of something your ancestors did. I think you should know something, this world may be run by the weak said naruto constructing another rasengan that rapidly grew in size but it will soon be run by the strong the only true show of strength is from the ones willing to fight for the greater good clearly you are the bottom feeder of this species but i am going to offer you a chance apologize and i will spare you apologize for what you just said and for shooting me and i will happily let you go on your way naruto offered not believing for a second he would take it instead he did the most uncivilized thing he would ever expect from a noble he spat on his face I will see everything burn before I apologize to you, snarled Saint Jul Mac. This is what constitutes a noble of the world, shouted Naruto, getting everyone's attention. No one would dare make a move for the chance they may hit the world noble, someone I find unworthy to clean the dirt from my boots. Something like this should hold the title scum of the earth, a more fitting title, I believe. Here is a little information before you leave this world for good. To kill everyone that knows me means you have to go to war with the elemental nations, and that is not something you want to do, you see we are bred for war, it's what we excel at, he finished by ramming a giant Rasengan into the noble, tearing him apart, leaving nothing but the twisted head of the world noble as evidence of his death, Naruto threw the head to the sailors on the ship, waiting for his clone to dispel signaling the start, nobody could believe their eyes, the world noble that all the higher ups were so worried about just went and got himself killed, oh, there was going to be hell to pay for this, Naruto felt the memories of his clone, indicating that all was ready, well as much as I would like to stick around, I am afraid I must be going, now when I say have a safe trip and don't come back now, yah here, you are going to listen this time aren't you? He queried, not even sticking around to find out the answer, Naruto disappeared in a golden flash, nowhere in sight. Let's get this party started announced Naruto upon returning to the island. As one the nine biju and Naruto channeled chakra to their respective seals, the blood in the transportation seal lit up golden then the rest of the island slowly did the same, Naruto could see in the distance, the marine ships closer to the island turning broadside to fire off their cannons, just as the first cannonballs were released, Uzu no Kuni started to fade, just as the cannonballs were about to impact the island, it vanished before the very eyes of the marine. Break in the calm belt, of the new world, bordering onto the west blue. Wow, Naruto that took a lot more than expected, complained Shukaku, turning to look at Naruto, only to find him on his hands and knees, breathing hard and barely conscious. You don't, need, to tell, me. He struggled to say breathing heavily, only to collapse on the ground out cold. Break Naruto awoke three days later to the niggling sensation of someone trying to contact him with his Hiraishin Jutsu. Ah, you are finally awake, spoke Saiken grabbing his attention, you seem to have recovered nicely, if there is a next time, might I suggest gathering nature chakra to help, so as to not leave you unconscious for three days. Yes, well, no time for that, I am being called back in the elemental nations, I may need you guys, if what I think happened, actually happened spoke Naruto before releasing the jutsu and locking onto the Hiraishin marker calling him, flashing himself back home. Break elemental nations, en route to the neutral meeting, fire daimyo's carriage. Damn it Naruto-sama, where are you? breathed out the fire daimyo, frustrated in not having been able to contact Naruto for two days. Appearing in a flash inside the fire daimyo's carriage, causing the man to jump in fright, was Naruto, rubbing the back of his head sheepishly, he had a funny feeling he might be in trouble. Naruto-sama, I have been trying to contact you for two days now, 
Where have you been? asked the slightly flustered fire daimyo. Ah, yeah sorry about that, just conducted a jutsu that left me unconscious for three days, he replied sheepishly. Good lord, are you alright? What were you doing to render someone as powerful as you unconscious for three day, on second thought? Maybe I don't want to know, just thinking of the sheer magnitude of the jutsu required to render the shinobi no kami out of commission for three days is giving me goosebumps. Well, he said grinning mischievously it is probably one of the biggest things I have done thus far, however, next time I should probably sit back and think of the consequences first, he again replied sheepishly. Well I must know now, this may have to go in the history books too, what happened? asked the fire daimyo. Moved an island, to the other side of the world, I think, he finished with a victorious smile. Stupefied, the only way to possibly describe the reaction to hearing the news of what Naruto has recently been able to accomplish, completely and utterly stupefied by the absurdity of that statement, surely such a thing was impossible, yet the completely seriousness that Naruto expressed with that statement was enough to know he wasn't bluffing. Well, I look forward to hearing more about it later, which island was it, before we get on to a different topic, inquired the fire daimyo. Uzu no Kuni replied Naruto with a sense of happiness. Ah, so you finally found it, I am glad, now on to the topic of why I have been attempting to contact you. The daimyo of Mizu no Kuni was informed by the Mizukage that they had intercepted a large vessel the size of informed the fire daimyo before he was cut off by Naruto. A biju and that they wanted to speak to the representatives of this land? Finished Naruto, though he wasn't sure about the last part. Why yes, how did you know? Asked the fire daimyo. I believe I have had the misfortune to have run into them already and may I say they have already made my shit list, spoke Naruto in a firmly aggressive tone. And why is that Naruto-sama? Asked the fire daimyo wondering what one has to do to make the shit list of the most power and forgiving man he knows. Well, from what I have seen so far, they feel it their right to impose themselves anywhere they go, especially these world nobles I heard about, I had the fortune to meet one, right before I ended him for his remarks regarding the death of anyone who knew me and my precious people, answered Naruto. The two were quiet for a moment, stewing in thought before Naruto broached the subject of the meeting, I will be present but not seen during the meeting, unless I wish to be, I would like to know what these people want and have to say without them fearing I will do something to them, voiced Naruto as he utilized the transparent escape jutsu created by Jiraiya, which is an offshoot of the hiding with camouflage jutsu. I would much appreciate it if you would inform the other daimyo and the gokage when they arrive that though they cannot see me, know that I am here and will explain later asked Naruto as he opened the carriage door and jumped off towards the neutral meeting tower. Break neutral meeting tower, hi no kuni. The room having been arranged into elevated seating for the purpose of this meeting so that the daimyo were seated on the first tier. The gokage above them on the second tier, and above them is the seat for Naruto on the third tier. This arrangement did not show that Naruto had the most power, then the gokage and finally the daimyo, no, it was in fact the opposite, because the daimyo were the rulers of the continent, they were to be easily heard, the Gokage then having majority say in military affairs, then finally, Naruto, the historian, the peacekeeper, the sage, the national hero, he is here to make sure that everything discussed is for the betterment of the elemental nations. Naruto already in his seat, using the transparent escape jutsu, watched on as each daimyo directed a small nod to him as they took their seats, so too, did the Gokage, once everyone had taken their seats, three marines entered, the two eldest marines took the seats while the young one watched on with a calculating eye, there was something about this marine that Naruto felt was off, it seemed like he was judging everyone there, not the kind of person you would bring to a meeting of this stature. Before we begin, spoke the Rakage, a man built like all his predecessors, in as pleasant a voice as one would hear, I would ask that the young marine to wait outside. Before the two older marines could have the chance to speak, the young marine spoke up, clearly displeased with this request. Why if I may, am I being asked to leave? I have done nothing but stand here since I walked in. Seems a little predigest if you ask me, replied the marine, short and crisply. That right there is why I am asking you to leave, boy. In front of you, are obviously your superiors, yet instead of allowing them to speak on your behalf as is their job. You immediately run your mouth like a child being scolded for doing nothing, yet as soon as you enter this room, one in which sits the lords nobles kings queens, whatever you would call them, of this land, your eyes have done nothing but look at each and every one of us like you are measuring us for a body bag replied the rakage, voice taking on a dangerous edge as slowly he floods the room with his key, causing the young marine to take a step back from the intensity of this feeling. I must agree with the rakage, spoke the daimyo from Tetsu no Kuni, looking directly at the young marine, being a warrior myself I have noticed the same thing from this young upstart, he finished before looking towards his superiors, I would suggest next time, not bringing anyone who is clearly nothing more than a grown child, he ended, hands folded in front of his face, elbows on the table in front of them. 
The anger making its way onto the face of the Marine was almost laughable to Naruto, but the show wasn't finished there as the young Marine could not hold it together any longer. This is outrageous, spoke the young Marine, I have done nothing since standing in this position, I came here to learn how negotiation and greetings were conducted, so that I might understand the process, considering everything that has happened since we arrived here I believe I am holding myself together rather well, this outburst withstanding. What is your name sailor? asked the fire daimyo, Lieutenant Sakazuki, commissioned officer of the marines, replied Sakazuki. Well, Lieutenant Sakazuki, what do you mean when you say considering everything that has happened since you arrived? asked the fire daimyo. Sakazuki then proceeded to tell them of their journey thus far. The daimyos made sure to keep a neutral expression as they listened to the lieutenant recount the list of events thus far, even going as far as to say the marines were forced off an island they laid claim to for nothing more than someone else saying that it's his. Everyone narrowed their eyes at that remark, something, which caught the attention of both Admiral Sengoku and Vice Admiral Garp. Sakazuki wait outside until either Garp or myself comes and gets you, addressed Sengoku. Known not to argue with his superiors he made his way out the door to stand at the side waiting. We apologize for what ill intentions this may have caused. It was not the case, we did not mean to insult you, it's just that the ability to do things like this have not happened in such a long time, and believe that it will never happen again, that is why we wanted the young lieutenant to accompany us, to help instruct the next generation, now while this, as a first meeting, has not gone as smoothly as one would like, I wish to request that our young companion be allowed back in to observe these talks requests Sengoku with his head bowed. Quite the silver tongue you have on yourself Admiral, if only that trait had made its way onto the young lieutenant, I am inclined to allow it, if supported by my fellow daimyo, on the condition that while he is in here, he sits down next to you and closes his eyes, this is a time to listen and learn, one can often learn more just from listening, spoke the spring daimyo. With a nod from all her fellow daimyo, Garp stood up to retrieve the young lieutenant, while assistant was asked to retrieve an additional chair. Garp and Sakazuki returned only waiting for the arrival of a chair. If it is okay, may we seat his chair between us? asked Garp. Why do you ask? queried the spring daimyo, that way should he do or say something that is out of line we can, he trailed off thinking for the best way to phrase it, administer, a fist of love, as I like to call it with my kid, replied Garp with a sinister smile on his face directed at Sakazuki, who was quivering in fear a little. Turning back to the daimyos, Sakazuki beseeched them with pleading eyes to not let it happen. He plea went unheard, Naruto getting agitated at how long it was taking to find another seat decided it was time for conversations to start, going through three one-handed hand seals, a chair grew from out of the ground in front of the marines. The marines looked up suddenly at those around them wondering who grew a chair for them, their first thought was devil fruit, which was voiced by Sengoku, Sakazuki probably would have if the lingering threat from Garp was to be taken lightly, they never were. So, someone possesses the power of a devil fruit? asked Sengoku wondering who and what power having seen no one move to make the chair grow. Devil fruit? What is a devil fruit? asked the Suchikage. A fruit of weird design that tastes horrible and once you eat it, you lose your ability to swim in the ocean and become weak when touched by seawater. Also, sea stone, a mineral with the same properties of the sea have adverse effects on the person who ate the devil fruit, isn't that right Sengoku? asked Garp, smiling at his buddy. The daimyo looked over towards Sengoku, as he took over from where his friend left off. What my colleague forgot to mention was that those were the downsides, the upside is the ability granted by the fruit. Each one gives different abilities, from becoming an animal, to a rubber man, also being able to create earthquakes with the wave of your hand, spoke Sengoku, attempting to get a raise out of the members of something impossible. Meanwhile, Garp and Sakazuki took their seats with Sakazuki closing his eyes and listening only. And coming across things like this out in the rest of the world is rare? asked the Mizukage, curious to find out if their abilities would consider them an oddity. It is not as rare as it once was, Garp answered back. And these abilities, what does coming into contact with seawater do exactly? Continued the Mizukage. It weakens the, until they are little more than putty in your hands, seawater pretty much makes them an anchor, should a devil fruit user fall into the ocean without a non-devil fruit user available to save them, they are basically dead, answered Sengoku. Well then that rules out anyone on this continent that we know of, spoke the Hokage. No one suffers ill effects due to seawater. Then how was the chair grown? asked Sengoku I myself am a devil fruit user, the only time I have ever seen something like this is when someone has consumed a devil fruit. Oh, so you assumed that one of us consumed a devil fruit because you have never seen anything like this before without it being done by a devil fruit user? asked the case cage, also out of curiosity what can you do because of this devil fruit? Well yes, never before have I seen anyone who could do something like that without being a devil fruit user, as to what I can do. I ate the human human fruit. Model. Great Buddha. If you would allow a demonstration? 
asked Sengoku as he moved out of his chair towards the back of the room. Slowly a golden sheen came over Sengoku as he grew and grew, stopping just before he hit the roof, finally taking on his final form, that of a great Buddha, after returning back to normal. I am capable of becoming much bigger than that, informed Sengoku. Roughly how big would you estimate? asked the ever-curious Mizukage. About 30 meters tall, answered Sengoku about the same height as a boss summons, remarked the Hokage. To answer your previous question, Admiral, what caused the chair to grow was the application of chakra, two different types in fact, water chakra and earth chakra, now it is my belief that you may not know what we are talking about when we speak if chakra, fear not as that can be explained after by the Gokages, spoke the water daimyo, indicating the five cages behind him, we daimyo would like to speak more on the topic of why you have come here. Ah, yes, well, to start off, we work for the marines. A military organization created by the world government. Our job is maintaining the peace, assisting and protecting the people of the world, our main focus is pirates as they are the worst criminals the world has to offer, at the moment, we also deal with bandits, among other problems, our main presence is on the grand line, we will sometimes assist countries that require it, in regards to removing criminal organizations and anything to do with political racketeering, conspiracies, etc., informed Sengoku. Do the other countries have their own military? asked the Iron Daimyo. They do, we serve the world government more so than any individual country, so we usually deal with matters regarding the world as a whole, spoke Garp. I am glad to hear that, as due to the size of our country, being without our own military would be advantageous to criminals, plus finding jobs for over 125,000 plus people would cause problems, and that's not including the royal guards spoke the Iron Daimyo, informing of the potential economic downfall from such decisions. I am sorry, but I am not sure I heard you correctly, did you say over 125,000 plus warriors, soldiers, military personnel? asked Garp, slightly questioning his hearing. Indeed, that is the combined number of our nation's shinobi, each cage controls around 25,000 shinobi, give or take a few hundred, then there are the samurai from the Tetsu no Kuni, I believe there are around 1520,000, is that right? asked the lightning daimyo. That figure sounds about right, though we have had an influx of young trainees this year. Things have definitely been blooming for this decade, spoke the Iron Daimyo. Earlier you addressed your forces as shinobi, is that to say they're real ninja or is that just a title given to your military? asked Sengoku, wounding of the possibility of having shinobi amongst the ranks of the marines. I guess we can give you a brief history lesson that will be informal on both our culture and militia, but first, we would like to know what benefits come from joining the world government, asked the fire daimyo, getting to the heart of the matter. I have been asked to give you this, said Sengoku holding out a treaty with the name on top designated final continent, this is the same treaty set up with all the other countries, it is to allow you to make changes if necessary we have been give authority to play with the treat as this treaty is being established 700 years after the creation of the world government, so, there may be some outdated things in it, he continued as he handed the document on to the fire daimyo. Very well, we shall review this in the chamber to the side and come back with any changes we may have, until then, our gokage can give you a brief history of our culture as well as our militia, you may however, Find that you need to go outside to experience some things the cage have to offer, replied the fire daimyo. Maybe we should take this discussion outside to the courtyard, spoke the case cage and you can open your eyes now young lieutenant, slowly he opened his eyes letting them adjust to the light, slightly disorientated from the lack of perception. Slowly they made their way down from their seats and lead the three marines outside into the courtyard, where they found two members of the marines and Dr. Vega Punk. Also glad you could join us doctor, we are about to hear some of the history of their culture and militia, their warriors they refer to as shinobi, spoke Sengoku no the last part piqued the doc's interest. Before we begin, I was wondering if you could explain a bit more about the world and these devil fruits you thought one of us may have possessed asked the case cage. Admiral Sengoku informed them of the world, the different seas. How they were located in what was known as the East Blue, the Grand Line and how it was lined by the Calm Belt, the different parts of the Grand Line, known as Paradise and the New World, the Red Line and how it encircles the whole world the stationing of Marijoy also known as the Holy Land, on the Red Line, and how it is only accessible to the world nobles known as the Celestial Dragons, a bit of history on the Celestial Dragons. During the entire conversation Naruto was comfortably sitting in a tree listening to everything the Admiral had to say, think I transported Uzu no Kuni into the calm belt somewhere, might have to summon some of my avian friends to do some scouting, to find which side of the new world, the journal did say it came from the chaotic side, not something I would name paradise. Once the Admiral finished, the Tsuchikage went on to explain about the culture, their way of ruling, how things were done in the past and the wars that were fought, he then went on to explaining the fourth shinobi world war and the significance it played in their history. You haven't said anything that would lead me to an answer regarding the lone seat above where you sat, 
Is that seed of little importance or is there something we are missing? Asked Sakazuki, having seen the seed and wondered where the occupant was. Ah, yes, that seed is designated to a man, who has done countless things for the prosperity of our lands, he was the hero of the Fourth Shinobi World War, he goes by many titles, the historian, the elemental senin, the chakra no senin, the immortal shinobi, we know him mostly as the shinobi no kami but I like to refer to him as Gramps, he is my ancestor and hero of the elemental nations, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, replied the Hokage. All marines sucked in their teeth at what they just heard, surely they are not one and the same, this hero they speak of lived 1500 years ago, according to their history, yet there was someone else out there using the same name. I think it best that I inform you that we have met someone else that is using the same name, they have become a wanted man by the world government for acts of piracy and the deaths of around 2000 men and the destruction of battleships, I would hate for someone to be using and vilifying the name of such a hero, spoke Sengoku. Ah, so you have already met Naruto-sama, and by the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like it was pleasant, spoke the Mizukage. Wait are you saying you know there is someone out there causing destruction, committing acts of piracy and you have done nothing to stop him, shit, he is even defaming the name of your great hero, surely with the force you control you would be able to stop him, argued Sakazuki. You misunderstand the importance of the person you met, explained the rakage, for you see, the person who you ran into is not going around committing acts of piracy or causing destruction, he is not pretending to be Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, he is, in fact, the one and only Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze the one we spoke about in our history, the hero of the fourth shinobi world war. But then he would have to be, trailed off Garp and he thought of what he was saying, it seemed impossible. Over 1500 years old, spoke the Hokage, continuing on where the marine left off, he is not usually one to go around causing destruction or committing acts of piracy, you usually have to set him off for something like that to happen, even so he is usually pretty forgiving, care to share what you have done to tick off, Naruto-sama, asked the Hokage. Dr. Vega Punk decided to address this as he was the only one there for both encounters, by the end they had five very pissed of cage, if the feeling of their key flooding the area was to be judged, though the Hokage seemed significantly more pissed than the others. So, let me try and understand this, even though it seems pretty clear. And all this could have been avoided, my great ancestor. Arrived on the island of our ancestral home, asked you guys to leave, only for him to have to force you to leave and yet all are alive, asks the Hokage, anger mounting. Then you come back with a fleet of battleships to force him from our ancestral home, only for him to stop you, destroying two battleships in the process and you want to label him as the criminal shouted the Hokage bringing to bear the full weight of his might on these marines. The doc and his two guards were out cold, Lieutenant Sakazuki was on his hands and knees trying to breath, while the admiral and vice admiral were still holding strong, though there was a sliver of fear mixed in with a healthy dose of disappointment, the marines acted irrationally in this regard and it cost them many lives. A flare of chakra from an unknown source, to the marines, was all it took and the pressure vanished from the force the Hokage was bringing to bear, while the Gokages regained their composure, the unconscious doctor and marines returned to their feet. I am sorry to say this admiral, but had I been the one to find our ancestral home, and found people trespassing, no matter the reason, none of them would have left the island alive, one of Uzu no Kuna's most absolute laws, besides the Uzumaki clan, only the Senju clan, our cousins can step foot on our land without prior approval, anyone else, be they civilian or from another clan, forfeits their life for trespassing, the fact that Naruto-sama showed you compassion and let your people live is beyond anything any other Uzumaki would do, spoke the Hokage. Well said my child, though I believe it is time to do away with old traditions like such, that is why I spared them after all, spoke Naruto as he released the jutsu right before their eyes. You roared Sakazuki as he disappeared in an attempt to strike Naruto down, however, he was intercepted by the rakage and forced to the ground painfully. You would do well to remember that you are a guest here, lieutenant, I would suggest thinking before acting next time, addressed the rakage before throwing him to the ground at his superiors. Hey Gramps, how's the back? greeted the Hokage, still as cheeky as ever I see Sasuke, greeted Naruto with a pat on his back before clenching his fist and driving Sasuke into the dirt, with a chakra enhanced punch to the back of the head. After a moment the Hokage leapt back to his feet, pointing an accusatory finger at Naruto, while nursing a pretty big bump on the head, what the hell was that for, he shouted like a big kid. Naruto threateningly raised his fist and waved it at Sasuke Uzumaki, I told you to keep a better grip on your emotions, or do we need some more emotional training? He asked, Sasuke, knowing that when he says training he really means torture, shock his head hard and fast. That's what I thought, said Naruto before turning back to look at the marines, I am not here to fight you. I am here because as the historian I must make note of these instances, I am not sorry for my actions, I let your people leave Uzu no Kuni in one piece, 
everyone returned to you alive and I remember saying don't come back, you returned bringing war, that is the only thing ships of that size could indicate, declared Naruto with a pointed glare. And don't even get me started on that world noble, if the daimyo agree to this joining of the world government, I will be making one small stipulation, if the world nobles ever come here or anywhere, where I am, they will either obey the rules that govern that kingdom or I will destroy them. I am an empath, I have the ability to perceive the mental and emotional state of any individual I choose. Never before have I felt someone so unworthy of living, I do not care what their ancestors have done, I have lived longer than the implementation of this world government, if they want to ride on the coattails of their ancestors then that's their choice, I don't care, but if they think they can go anywhere and do anything and not suffer the consequences, I promise you I will burn their world to the ground around them, spoke Naruto, his voice taking on a deeper note. Naruto made his way past the marines, inside to the meeting room, having had enough of the marines, he left a shadow clone in the tree, in case there was more to hear. The marines wanted to hear more about this chakra and the cages wanted to hear more of these devil fruits. The marines went on to discuss the different devil fruit types, the difference between Logia, Paramisha and Zone devil fruits, and the only ability that is able to fight against devil fruits, Haki, after the explanation of Haki. Most of the cage were intrigued by this ability. It seemed similar to chakra, it seemed especially similar to those who can use nature chakra. After the marines demonstrated Haki, the cages then went on to explain what chakra was. The marines were astounded, what they perceived to be unnatural abilities given to people by devil fruits, they are now finding a society of people who can do the same things as a person with devil fruit abilities without the downsides, the everyday person, capable of moving the ground around them, of expelling fire from their mouths or covering their body with lightning, and some being able to combine elements. It's like they were created for war, thought Sengoku. While the cage were interested in these devil fruits, the marines were much more interested in their people. Having made their way back to the meeting hall, no one noticed the shadow clone go up in a puff of smoke. Inside the chambers Naruto was seated at the top going through the memories of the clone as everyone made their way to their seats, the similarities between people capable of using chakra and these devil fruits had Naruto's mind going into overdrive, the similarities were just too common, from the history of chakra to these devil fruits, they both had one thing in common, it started with a fruit. The talks were back underway, and the daimyo had a few things they wanted taken out or added to the treaty before joining the world government, so too, did the admiral Sengoku. Daimyos I wish to add something that will either make or break this treaty. However, please listen to everything I have to say before jumping to conclusions. We need you to remove 25,000 shinobi from your military. As it stands now, you have roughly 20,000 more personnel in your military than we have in the marines, I understand that there could be an economic incident regarding this action and I am sure the world government would be happy to assist, it's just that no military is allowed to contain more personnel than what is currently active in the marines, spoke Sengoku with his head bowed. Before any of the cage or daimyo could protest this, Naruto spoke up. Done, 25,000 personnel will be removed from the shinobi forces, stressing the shinobi forces part. Everyone turned to him slightly shocked for one reason or another, Naruto had never made any move to undermine the leaders of the countries and villages, for him to do so would mean he knew something they didn't and had already thought of a way around it. The marines were not sure what game he was playing at, nor did they think he had the power to accept such condition, he played no part in their hierarchy of leaders. He also seemed to accept it too quickly, like he knew something they didn't. Very well, we will go with Naruto's recommendation, 25,000 personnel will be removed from the shinobi forces, spoke the fire daimyo, after consulting the other daimyo. Thank you daimyos, we did not wish to overstep boundaries, it is just that this condition has never had to be met before, never before has a nation had more in their armed forces than those in the marines, I am certain the world government would be happy to help should this cause any economic strife amongst your nation, spoke Sengoku. Thank you for your concern admiral, is that all you have to add to the treaty? asked the lightning daimyo. Yes, the only other thing is a request but has no bearing on the treaty, he replied. May we hear this request now before we bring forth our changes? asked the wind daimyo. We would like to obtain your permission to recruit anyone interested in joining the marines. Once more knowledge of this has become public, he spoke with trepidation knowing how this looked after their last discussion. He was quick to explain a bit more. I understand you may think that we only wanted you to lower your armed forces so that we could get any left without jobs. That is not our goal, truthfully I would have asked this even if your armed forces contained less than the marines forces, everyday pirates and criminals with devil fruit abilities are becoming harder to fight against, thus making it more difficult to protect everyone, finished off Sengoku, hoping to quell any negative thoughts about his actions. Our people must be a blessing for you, admiral, addressed Naruto, however, I have to wonder what would happen to our shinobi if they are to join the marines. 
I hope you realize that should anything happen to the elemental nations because of the marines and you have acting shinobi within your forces you will have an uprising the likes of which you will have never seen and wish to never see again, and what of normal civilians, would you want them too? asked Naruto. Anyone who would wish to join, I believe that because of this ability you call chakra, your race is more capable than any other, replied Sengoku. What about moral compass? asked Naruto I don't think I follow, what do you mean regarding one's moral compass? replied Sengoku. What I mean is, I have heard some of your marines talking about absolute justice. If a sailor can see something he is being asked to do is wrong. Do they have the ability to question the order and not be punished done having done so? I mean it's kind of like the predicament you are in with me at the moment. You were tasked to force me from my homeland, all because I forced you from it in the first place, that sounds like an order I would think someone would question, I informed the rear admiral that it was the island of my ancestors and to never come back, you came back with warships, that suggests that someone up the chain of command is either abusing their power or the world government is a bunch of bullies thinking they can do what they want, which is it? asked Naruto. We were not informed of what transpired between you and rear admiral Mozambia, he is still in hospital, unconscious, replied Sengoku tersely, had we been able to speak to him the same probably would have happened anyway, you attacked a government official, that would not go without consequence. Not my government official replied Naruto, regardless we would have been sent to investigate, the fact that on that island research was being conducted that the marines had a vested interest in only worsened the situation, had Dr. Vega Punk been allowed to retrieve his research and the experiments, then none of this may have happened, remarked Sengoku. Yet the research was pertaining to things found from my island, you see they give of a distinct signature, very similar to some others I feel daily, and I could feel their presence elsewhere on the island, meaning they had been moved from the island to the cave, that makes them my property, also, the research I felt belonged to me because it regarded the experiments that belonged to me, do you see where I am going with this? And even though I am yet to see these experiments I have a funny feeling that they are devil fruits, aren't they? asked Naruto. They are, and as I can see your people do not need the fruits, you yourself are powerful enough to destroy a fleet of out ships, what could possibly interest you about those fruit, we were trying to see if we can replicate the process in making similar fruit, replied Sengoku. It'll tell you what, once I have made copies of all the notes pertaining to the fruits, I will hand the originals back to you, I want to understand more about this world and they are pertaining to a part of my ancestral home, whether or not I use the fruits is of no importance, they stay with me spoke Naruto. I am sure Dr. Vega Punk would appreciate it, how long will it take to finish making copies, asked Sengoku knowing that they would prefer having the doc's notes instead of nothing. One day, I will get some started on it right away, spoke Naruto as a shadow clone appeared next to Naruto before flashing away. I didn't realize you were able to do things outside of manipulating the elements with chakra, I am to assume you created that replica of yourself with chakra? asked Garp. Indeed replied Naruto we would like for the world government to look over our changes made before anything is finalized. However, there is one change that you should be made aware of. These celestial dragons you call world nobles, if they are to come to the elemental nations or be in our waters. Which we will designate with a marker for convenience, they are to obey the rules that govern this land or not come here at all. This is pretty much a curtsy for any and everyone that comes to these shores, if you hurt someone, whether they be with you or not, we will take action, if you kill someone, your life is forfeited, no one will be treated differently whether they be noble or commoner, am I understood admiral? spoke the fire daimyo, making sure to get his point across. If that be the case, I would think it best we not tell the celestial dragons where you are located and try to deter any attempt they may have at coming here, because whether or not you make that ruling, the celestial dragons are held above the world government, explained Sengoku. Very well, but you have been warned, we have had peace for 1500 years because of that man up there, if you threaten that, you face him, responded the fire daimyo pointing up at Naruto. That brings us to another point, because of his actions he may be labeled as a criminal, that will be left up to the Gorosei who run the world government, not the marines as this is more of a political matter, finished Sengoku. Then we await their answer, the moment we become a part of the world government, our shinobi forces will lose 25,000 personnel, at that stage you are welcome to start recruiting. We would like nothing more than our people being able to explore what the world has to offer. Next time you return, would you bring charted maps of the world as well as books pertaining to anything the world has to offer? asked the water daimyo. At that, the marines started to make their way from the room to the transport weighing outside, however, before they could go, Naruto appeared waving documents that sparked recognition in the dock. You are returning my notes? asked the dock. I informed the admiral that I would return them once I made copies for myself, replied Naruto. It just took less time than I thought. As they departed Naruto went back inside to talk with the Gokage and Daimyos, once they were seated in their normal arrangement Naruto began to explain his reasoning behind accepting the terms, how they could train up more samurai and use them as village protection thus keeping the shinobi number lower, 
keeping the same level of protection and making it seem like they were conceding to the world government this time, later they could use this in better negotiations. He also went on to explain his wanting to repopulate his ancestral home again and that he would be more than happy to take anyone with him, that way they had a presence on both sides of the world, he also had many ideas to bring in a new age of technology and may need the assistance, the best way to do all this was without the world government knowing as he was not sure what they would do. Everything he created would also be usable here in the elemental nations, but they cannot create it as according to the treaty, any technology created by the elemental nations was to be shared with the world government, a loophole if you would. Naruto informed them that he would be spending most of his time on Uzu no Kuni, as he believed that his ability to act would be more prevalent from there, he would be stopping in monthly and was always contactable by way of Hiraishin Jutsu, and so with that done Naruto left the meeting area and returned to Uzu no Kuni to commence his research and put some of these ideas into motion. His clones had found the jackpot regarding technological advancement, but the best part was one of his clones had stumbled onto a possible source for creating the more advanced technology. A viable option instead of this fossil fuel crude oil is spoken about in the books, the only hard part was making it, he believed he had the ability to create it with chakra, it would just require a lot of concentration. And so, off he went, to create history again, the end, thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video, see you in the next video.